Okay, welcome back to another video. My name is Jesse. I am a tutor in Melbourne and I also make a whole bunch of different GAMSAT videos. I usually make videos about section three, but I took a bit of a break from making section two videos. I don't really know why. I think I just got kind of too wrapped up in the section three stuff. But um, now I would hope uh, this sitting for September, I'm gonna put a little bit more emphasis on section two stuff. Uh, a lot of people found what I did before really helpful. I'm currently collecting feedback on the March sitting and how people found the content in their preparation for it, including section two and section three content. And uh, the feedback so far has been really positive. If you haven't already filled it in, feel free, I'll link it below as well. And it's, um, it's uh, where else is it linked? I made a video about it. So you could also just look at the quick little video that I made saying something like, did this channel help you or whatever? Um, but you can, you can jump on there, you can fill out the feedback. I'm gonna be collecting feedback for a fair while, maybe about a month or so until I've got a decent sample size and then going through and making a report. But anyway, back to this. Um, one of the things I was hoping to do was create some different kind of video series. Last time I did the Write With Me series, which I think I'm gonna try and do, but I don't think I'll be able to keep up uh, on a weekly basis just because my work schedule is really quite intense for the next few months But I also wanted to kind of shake it up a little bit and offer some different elements because in that one I'm just kind of silently writing and a lot of the value comes from people reading the essays that I publish afterwards um, and it's it's kind of some uh, It's like some accountability What I wanted to do this time is look a little bit more in depth at the kind of ideation planning process So this is a new series that I'm at the moment. I'm going to be calling it read and respond. I don't know whether or not that's a nice name, but I had the right with me, um, which seems to have started a bit of a trend, which is kind of cool because I know there was all like the study with me thing. So I'm not completely a creative mind, but um, I figured that, hey, no one was doing anything live study stuff for Gamset writing. So I was like, let's start right with me. So now I'm going to do read and respond. So basically what I'm going to do is in real time, respond to a random quote um, and then break down how I would actually respond to it, explain my thought processes, and uh, then turn it into a plan. It won't have an essay behind it. Um, if people feel that they would like to see the essays as well, now that I'm saying this, people are definitely going to say, yes, we'd like to see the essays. I just don't know whether or not I have the time to be able to write uh, quite as many essays anymore because um, everything has to be in a week. There's so many different things that need to get done. Um, so I don't know whether or not I can promise that, but at least looking at the ideation, I will look a little bit more at the writing process in, in a separate series where I do a little bit more analysis of some of my essays. I will do my best to try and turn these plans into essays so you can see how they come into action. But um, I know a lot of people have really struggled with coming up with ideas. So hopefully this shows my process um, of how I do it. I don't really have a really strict process that I follow. I know that can be a little bit unnerving for people that are maybe less familiar with writing. Um, obviously, like I should give a disclaimer, like when I say that I'm a tutor, I have been a tutor to high school students for 12 years. So, and I tutor most subjects and that includes English and literature. And so, of course, I've been analyzing essay structure and critiquing essays of students and then writing sample essays and taking them through that process for a very long time. Um, and so some of that may be a little bit more kind of automated and that's maybe why I don't really follow a strict process. I'm going to try and annotate or kind of narrate as much as possible the way and why I'm thinking in that way. But my writing style is often that I like to be open to new ideas and I let the idea just kind of take shape as it goes. And I try not to be too judgmental of the first thing that comes into mind. I will usually try to get it all out on paper or on the screen and then try to mold it and work out what is the most logical sequence and the most logical way to connect these ideas. If anything, that's kind of my system. I know that's really vague though. So um, I'm also gonna make some other kind of general videos about different structures that do help people and are useful. And then from there, you can kind of work out what, what works best for you. But hopefully this kind of series also shows you a kind of adaptable way to writing as well. So. Um, what I'm going to do, let me actually get a screen record set up here because I haven't done that. You can see how kind of ramshackle this series really is. Okay, so we've got this here and let's just go to Brainy Quote. So Brainy Quote is where I get all of my quotes that I then build uh, prompt sets out of. What I'm going to do though is I'm actually going to, we'll put it here. I'm actually just going to do one quote. It makes it a little bit harder. This is a good way to practice as well. Um, so let's go with topics and I'll link Brainy Quote below if you're looking for it. 
uh, let's see. I, you know what? I'm just going to close my eyes and or I'll just... I've got to make sure my mouse is on there. All right, I'm just going to like wait until the, the cursor is on something. I'm just going to stop there. So movies okay this is gonna be really tough um we're gonna go with it i don't know this would probably be more likely task a than task b again what i'm gonna do sometimes i might have to pick some of them are gonna be useless but again what i'm gonna do is just kind of scroll a little bit and then just randomly pick one and i've landed on this one the difference between life and the movies is that a script has to make sense and life doesn't okay that one works quite well actually okay so let's put that in and here we are. So the difference between life and movies uh, is that a script has to make sense and life doesn't. That is very task B, isn't it? All right. So that's going to be my, my quote. Now I'm going to look at how I respond. So I really don't know. This one's going to throw me quite a bit. So the first thing is I definitely wouldn't interpret it literally. I try to avoid literal interpretations. I find them very limiting. Um, what I would do is I would look at the last bit more than anything. I really kind of gravitate towards that. Um, a script has to make sense, life doesn't. I go, all right, I kind of gel with that. That makes a lot of sense to me. So then I would go, okay, why? Why does, well, why does that make sense is the question. I usually go through algorithms of question trees. Um, so why does that make sense to me? And I question my actual own assumptions. So the first thing is a script you can control and, uh, and build, whereas life has less controllable elements. That kind of works. It sounds kind of nice. Um, I would look at like, all right, how am I going to actually build that up? So I wouldn't need to explain the script component making sense all that much. Um, life doesn't have, uh, life doesn't need to make sense. Um, because it doesn't have controllable elements. So there is there is serendipity. I don't know whether or not I'd go with that. Um, there are external factors. There are interactions with other people. And all of these things can kind of change the course of our life without us realizing. So that's kind of where I would go with that. I don't know if that's hitting a dead end though. Um, it feels a little bit like that. So the other thing is it says that it has to make sense. So I would look at that and go, okay, so what's the function of a movie? What's the function of a script? So it's trying to, to tell a story. Um, so a script has to serve a function and tell a story. And so its cohesion uh, is paramount. No pun intended in terms of the movie producer. Uh, okay, next up. So then... Excuse all the typos, I'm shocking with it. I'm just going to leave it because there's going to be so many of them. Um, with life, so life doesn't have a uh, predictable ending, we'll say. And it does not have to serve a function. Now, this is already, I like to go for kind of provocative statements, right? And I've kind of said that without thinking much about it. So now I'm going to kind of dive into where that idea really comes from. So I would immediately go, okay, so we think that life has to have a meaning, but what if it has no function and we are trying to, uh, we'll say, yeah, we're trying to provide a function to make sense of something that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, right? So we storytell as people, um, we do things with an intended outcome, right? We work for money, we work for change or this or that. Yet when we kind of zoom out and actually look at what's actually happening, we can't really understand the function um, or the purpose of life itself. And so we try to fill that hole with different theories and explanations, right? So we use religion um, and faith to help organize our understanding of the function of life and uh, we make purpose for ourselves. This is very nihilistic, but we make purpose for ourselves and our life's work in 
choosing things like career, choosing things like relationships, choosing things like principles and values um, to provide a function for our life and um, create closure. Then we zoom back out, but so now I kind of like where this is going. So, uh, but what if there is no intended uh, purpose and making sense of life is a function of like human instinct and nature or human nature, I'll say, and human nature rather than one of concrete reality like that. So going a little bit further, you can see I just have very kind of free flowing ideas. Um, we assume battery's gonna die. <laughs> Uh, we assume that, all right, that battery is going to go on me in any second. So I'm going to switch over to Zoom. Let's just do that. Okay, so we're back now. We're back on Zoom. So excuse the slightly lower quality. Um, I might still try to record here and just see how long that battery actually lasts, but that'll be dead. There it goes, dead. Uh, all right, so we assume that, um, what was I saying? I've lost track of it now. Uh, I'll probably just let that idea go. I don't know if it was going anywhere. There we go. So now what I'd do is I'd kind of scan back over and go, right, what ideas have I come up with in all of this? So I probably liked the most of this one because it felt a little bit more analytical, which is normally how I kind of trend. Um, and in that, I would probably take some bits and pieces. So this bit to me seems very good as a setup. So I'll keep that bit. Um, then this is very analytical. So I'll take that and I'm kind of working out what my main focus is uh, going to be. Um, doesn't have to serve a function. That is seeming to become a bit more of like the contention. And this seems like a conclusion. So I don't have a huge amount of depth or a huge amount of ideas, but I'm gonna now go for depth rather than breadth. So putting all that together, now I'll start to organize this into a plan. So contention, truthfully, I don't normally write contention, but just so it's a bit clearer so that we can see it on the screen. Um, so the first thing is that uh, the difference. So ultimately I, I usually put it in really blank terms, right? Not that I would put this into the essay. So the statement is true uh, in that life does not necessarily have meaning and therefore does not need to follow a logical sequence. That's gonna be the basics of it. I'll, I usually then put down some notes, like what kind of kind of tone do I wanna go for? Are there gonna be things that I need to clarify? So most would argue that life has meaning and can be made sense of, but this might actually be a product of Uh, the cultural norm of creating sense out of nonsense. And it may also be a protectionism, be an example of, we'll say existential protectionism as the reality of a meaningless existence. is far less intimidating um, than a search for meaning itself, right? And by search, it's like we can just kind of create it. So that's that's kind of where I would go with that. That's like a clarification of the, the contention that I have. And then I would break that down. So then I would, I'd, losing the sense to the, the movie component. So what I would do is I would just go like, storytelling is an inherent um, element of human nature and human behavior, right? So historically, we've used all kinds of different communication, right? 
so communication uh, in like the classic like the campfire story or something but you can also look at it in the form of art so I'm trying to abstract it and show that I've got this kind of variable understanding of it uh, the campfire stories art through language through literature and film we branch it into movies right so then what do stories do so stories serve uh, to make meaning of events and of uh, observations and all of this helps us in categorizing and defining existence like that so a movie script is designed to do exactly this but then if we do away with the assumption that life has meaning and purpose and instead consider that the search for meaning in life uh, may be uh, one that is redundant then we can understand why it is that life often fails to follow logic or expectation. Now, I've left out examples, right? So what you could do, so you could look at, um, like you could be very emotive, so you could look at like death, um, the way that death reaches us. Uh, you could look at, um, like natural disasters, all these things that people often link to religiosity in some way, right? And if you ignore like faith and belief systems and that kind of thing as well, then it gets harder and harder to actually explain it. So obviously there's like the science that explains why like a tornado happens and, and all the rest of it. But there are, you could say there are a number of things that seem to just be unlucky chance events, yet they still occur. Um, why do these occur and how do we make meaning of it? Perhaps these are all things that happen for some reason that we've not yet discovered or something that we could explain, but ultimately is harsh or cruel. Um, like the, the fact that there is disease and all these kind of things, right? And this is just a natural element of existence. Uh, the whole idea of like trying to create meaning and, and purpose is, is trying to make sense of why we've, why we've ended up in this particular position. So it's very, very kind of existential, at least in the way that I'm taking it. Um, and movies kind of go by the wayside. I'm kind of arguing that they're very superficial and that they're a very kind of superficial comfort, not that they're completely in, like uh, completely valueless, but that the, the real answer lies a lot further than movies. Movies are just kind of like a very superficial way of dealing with this kind of nihilistic approach to, to existence. Um, so that is probably where I would go with that there. It seems like it's kind of reaching its natural ending point. I usually don't go for very long essays, although in the ones that I've sat recently, I did write a lot just because I had a lot of ideas going. This one, I don't have a huge amount on it, um, but that would be kind of the direction uh, that I would take it. And you can see that I didn't really go into it with a strict plan. I just kind of let the ideas come together. Um, I wrote them out. There were lots of things that I ended up ditching serendipity, external factors. They're there in case I feel like they're useful to me, but um, I just kind of work out what actually interests me, what I'm actually gonna be able to write genuinely about. And then I just kind of follow that. That's that's the basics of it. Um, and that would be how I would plan it too. It would just be like, uh, ironically, a sequence of different ideas that I wanna slowly work my way through because that way then my essay doesn't become like a very rigid, I am right and here's why, but more so let me take you on the process that my own brain has gone through I've just cut out all the junk that would waste your time <laughs> that wasn't good enough. That's kind of the way that I approach essay writing um, is it's a, a way of communicating or articulating thought rather than making very rigid pointed arguments all the time. And that to me serves me quite well. That's not to say that's the way to write essays. Other people have a lot more um, success with writing the kind of classic essay style uh, with evidence explained following like teal paragraphs and all that kind of stuff. For me, I find them a little bit kind of uh, jolting in the way that they read, at least in the way that I write them. Um, and I prefer to uh, write it almost like an open journal entry that is hopefully a little bit more sophisticated than a, a classic kind of journal entry. 
that, that's kind of the way that I approach them. Anyway, um, hopefully this was kind of helpful to see the, the breakdown of it. Let me know if you want me to turn this into like a long-term thing. I can do these, uh, I can do lots of them. This one's probably ended up a little bit longer because I was explaining it at the start. Um, I'll try to put a timer on myself maybe and limit myself to like 10 to 15 minutes to work through it. But I figured just expand on a little bit here at the moment um, just so that you can kind of see how it's all gonna work. And then we'll slowly work through them. Lots of different topics. Um, and then I think it would also be a good place to leave comments as detailed as you like. Nice big long comments are great. Um, if you wanna kind of share with others watching this how you would have approached this particular prompt, um, then leave it in the comments and let me know. Uh, you can also kind of leave me feedback on whether or not this was helpful, but also uh, how you kind of approach it, not just this particular prompt, but how you would approach the essay writing in general. Uh, and then we can really have like a community base of lots of different uh, types of approaches that will hopefully be helpful to others watching. Anyway, I'll leave that one there and I'll see you guys in the next video.